all I sort of wanted um, when we sort of started this work was, was for these kids to go out into the world and say, there's a museum, that's a place for me, that's, that's a place where I can go and uh, I've sort of travelled uh, with my family and with friends and it's amazing how many people will look at a museum and say, oh, I, I'm not the sort of person who goes to museums. I say, well, why not? It's like, oh, I'm, I don't read or I'm not, um, I'm not clever, I'm not, uh, I'm not into history. And so, well, just come and have a look. You might be surprised. And, um, and so what, all that I really, really want is, is to sort of get as many kids as possible coming into the museum to say, you know, this is a place where I belong. This is a place where uh, I can tell a story and um, I can be a part of what's happening and, and not a scary place. Just because I didn't do history at school doesn't mean I can't go to this place. And um, yeah, so that's, that's sort of really um, at the, the essence of the work that um, I'm trying to do. Uh, with them, but it's it's taking on a life of its own and extending so much more beyond that, which is really, um, really exciting. And inspiring kids is exactly what Sam Lear is definitely doing without a doubt. She's bringing kids into the museum, not just to have a look around, but to actually make a STEAM exhibition itself. Today is definitely about helping kids take ownership of their learning. You're listening to the Physics Ed Podcast. For hundreds of ideas, free experiments and more, go to physicseducation.com.au. And now, here's your host, Ben Newsom. Yes, welcome again to another Physics Ed podcast. Hey, big week this week. We're speaking with Sam Lear, who's the Regional Museum's Officer for the Museum of the Riverina. Now, if you're wondering where that happens to be, think Wagga Wagga. Think just near the New South Wales Victoria border on the New South Wales side is this fantastic museum spread across two sites which is obviously about the regional area, but I tell you what, Sam's doing a big thing with the local students. What they're doing is they're basically setting up a science hub. They're getting the students to come together and create this exhibition for the public around science and technology. And we're going to hear a lot about what this is all about. And I tell you what, Sam is highly passionate. She's a historian by trade, by her training, but she definitely understands the importance of science without a doubt. She's creating a STEAM exhibition. Love her work, and we're going to hear all about it. This is the Physics Ed Podcast. Well, my uh, role with the Museum of the Riverina is um, I'm the Regional Museums Officer. And uh, what that means is that I uh, coordinate um, sort of regional projects. So not just in-house exhibitions or um, events, but... Um, activities that might involve a number of local museums in our region and also outside of the LGA as well. So right across the Riverina, I get to go and speak to people and um, help them with their museum problems and also run these large uh, region-wide projects that take in lots and lots of different stories. So, And the Museum of the Riverina is um, in... Happy Wagga Wagga, or sunny Wagga Wagga today, definitely. So, um, yeah, it's a really lovely place uh, to be and to work and um, and to drive around and um, meet lots of other people, mostly volunteers as well, working in these small museums. I would um, argue also a booming area. Wagga Wagga is a fantastic place. My brother actually uh, lives down that way, and the... Um the site is as a regional hub and very much seeing that you're setting up a STEM hub, it makes complete sense because you have a, quite a large district to cover and a lot of people to look after as well. Yes. Unlike Canberra, we are halfway between Sydney and Melbourne. Exactly. Oh, dig. So <laughs> we do, we do have, we do actually have sort of a lot of choice and, and it is sort of the, a, a logical place to stop and it, it's, um, it's sort of got a, a lot of really lovely things about it, but it still has very much um, a, a country town feel to it. I'm not from Wagga. I've, I've been here about 12 years now, um, so definitely not a local yet. But um, it, it's a really um, great place to, to work and, and live, and there's lots of opportunity to do, like, big things, but also to keep things small and, and intimate and build you know, country town relationships with people. So it's it's quite a special place to work. Well, I'm really, really fascinated with what you're getting up to because clearly it's a social history museum, but you're jumping into this STEAM space, which is just 
awesome from my point of view, but mind you, I do love history. I'm very much a history buff. And you would be seeing that you are a historian. How did you get into thinking about getting into science stuff as well? Uh, it, lots and lots of different um, things that are going on um, in the museum and the history world uh, at the moment that, that sort of pulled little bits of information and um, projects that have been done elsewhere. But probably the, the one that really kicked this idea off for me was Auckland Museum a couple of years ago did a project where um, they worked with a group of high school kids and built Gallipoli in Minecraft. And then they turned it into a, a sort of scale model using the, the Minecraft blocks. So it, it gave sort of a sense of perspective. But then they also had uh, VR for the like uh, virtual reality um, goggles for the visitors coming to sort of walk through the Gallipoli uh, landscape. And I just thought it was one of the, the coolest things. And um, I have a, a Minecraft child and he was just blown away. And... Um, we also try and go to lots of museums and um, the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences had done some, like a lot of this sort of work around Minecraft. And uh, so it, it was sort of a few different ideas and um, just thoughts of, of what could we do to tap into this idea that computers can be used in, in a social history museum and what else is there? And, um, and then I found out about some uh, grants from Inspiring Australia, Inspiring which, yeah. Um, was, yeah, which were for 3D printers and for maker spaces. And I, I didn't even know what I was going to do with a 3D printer, but I just thought, wow, oh, I, I want one. Like <laughs> I just... I, I don't even know what I want to do with it. I just want one. <laughs> oh, the beauty about 3D printers, and, seriously, like just, 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 sorry, I inject for a little bit, but that's actually going on at work yeah, right, right now. One of our, um, we've got these things called Hobeman spheres. These these big expanding plastic balls that go from, sorry, it works in um, Imperial. So it goes from one foot to four feet. So whatever that is in metric, <laughs> it's, it's big. Um, these big expanding <laughs> balls, but the, these plastic components keep breaking. And we, we looked at this 3D printer going, at, you know, it's February, it's quiet. Let's just, do it. And so uh, one of the guys, Russell, the last couple of days has been creating these beautifully well-designed with all the bevels and edges, these parts that are going to save us a fortune because these, these plastic balls, for example, cost a couple hundred dollars to buy, or we could just get them printed in-house. It's fantastic. 3D printers are great. Yeah. And, and for um, some of our objects are sort of quite awkward shapes uh, and to sort of get uh, a stand that supports um, you know the object properly, so that it for its conservation, but also so that visitors can look at it. We're sort of seeing that there's a lot of potential, you know, beyond this project, that we can be designing um, custom stands for some of our things that are that might be too fragile to put on display uh, with the resources that we have. So we're really, really excited uh, once we start working with it and, and getting more confident with the software and the technology of uh, where it might take us. One of the things that I really love what you're doing, Sam, is you're just going, I don't know quite what we're, we're going to do with it yet, but we're just going to get it and we're just going to see. And that's just awesome because <laughs> the number of people that sort of like analysis paralysis, just overthink everything and just nothing happens. I love the fact that you've seen this, you know, the Minecraft, the VR exp um, exhibition at Auckland, which, you know, by the way, sounds all <laughs> I want to check that out myself now. Uh, but the uh, Yeah, it's, it's online, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And this is the thing, like, cause because it's, you're, you're looking at your own museum from a computer space, that means that people can interact around the globe. And that's just awesome. And it's not just via computers. I mean, you're actually going to have opportunity class in a local area getting into this too. Yes. Yes, we're very, very excited about this. We, um, I, I launched this project just a couple of days ago with the class and it was really um, lovely to see their response and the sort of things that interested them because you never know with kids um, and, until you get in there. And uh, so the project is called Steam the Museum and it's about using uh, different sort of steam technologies to solve problems that the museum has. Uh, so, um, but then sort of applying those in like a museum interpretation context. So it's not just about getting out some robots and doing a, a workshop on how to code robots. It's, it's about um, how can we use this robot to tell a story about the past? And so the, the group that works with robots 
um, in, in 1954, the Queen came to Wagga for 145 minutes. Every single minute is documented and photographed because it was such a big deal um, that, that Wagga was selected at one of the cities she visited. So that group is going to sort of use all those historical resources, um, use a, a map, um, and then they need to code um, these um, their little robots to to follow the route that she took, but storytell at the same time. So they're they're using this um, this sort of great new technology that um, we have sort of access to to budget and um, funds and um, the the resources that they need that they might not get otherwise, and that they sort of have a lot more know-how and a lot more um, confidence. And, and the, the wonderful thing about working with kids is that they don't see the barriers that we might see as adults, particularly once you've worked in a space for a while. There are sort of these um, rules that that aren't actually written down and, and you know, but you, you kind of know that they're there and you follow them. And uh, the kids don't see any of that. They're, they just... Um, take things from um, what they see it could be and and work towards that. They don't worry about, um, you know, what, but we haven't done that before or, uh, you know, that's not how we do things. They, they don't carry any of that baggage. So all of those um, assumptions that you carry into these things, they just smash them in, in the first couple of minutes and it's wonderful. It's so liberating. So How old are um, these kids? Yeah. Uh, they're 10 to 12, so they're, they're stage three, um, and this is a, a, like a follow-up um, exhibition. We did one last year with them, which was just using photographs, and, and they wrote labels, and um, it was the same sort of concept where they led the project, and they just blew us away. We were, we were sort of trying to, to work out the bugs in the process before we got onto this big project, the, the teacher and I, and um, they they really just... Um, went far beyond our expectations. So there, there's 30 children and so they were each given a, a frame that they had to curate. But what was in that, um, in the frame was up to them. But it, it needed to be a history story. It wasn't sort of, at my house I have a dog. It, it couldn't be something about their personal life. It had to be a, a Wagga or a Riverina story. And when we started it, I thought I'll have, you know, half of them will be about animals and the other half will be about sport. I couldn't have been more wrong. They, uh, they, uh, one, one girl was really interested in um, filigree architecture and um, some people were interested in, in money and conversion and uh, from, from pounds, shillings and pence into uh, decimal currency. And they did a heap of sums around how you convert money uh, back in the olden days, like how the, the massive maths that sort of went into um, pence and shillings and, and what have you. And it was the, the breadth and depth of, of their work was really surprising. And um, it's, it's just sort of always um, so interesting to see what kids do when you say go. Um, I, I've always wondered what would happen if a museum in had a class as this is the kids curators for the year and they created the discovery trail in the museum which is curated for by kids for kids it'd be so interesting it sounds like what you're doing is effectively the first steps towards something which i love it the kids are gonna have ownership of this let's be honest like they're, they're the ones that made it but <laughs> they're also gonna be the ones that then promote hey come check this place out then not only do they're going to do that with their families which is obviously inevitable but then their friends might be invited and it's just, it kind of feels like they could re-engage in a space which um, doesn't just have to be just a school trip. You can generally say, I got involved in making this thing. Yes, yes. And uh, the, the goal that, you know, very vague, well, not a vague goal, but a sort of not a, a massive goal, but all I sort of wanted um, when we sort of started this work was, was for these kids to go out into the world and say, there's a museum. That's a place for me. That's that's a place where I can go. And uh, I've sort of travelled uh, with my family and with friends. And it's amazing how many people will look at a museum and say, "Oh, I, I'm not the sort of person who goes to museums." I say, "Well, why not?" It's like, oh, I'm, "I don't read, or I'm not, um, 
I'm not clever, I'm not, uh, I'm not into history and so well just come and have a look, you might be surprised and, um, and so what all that I really really want is, is to sort of get as many kids as possible coming into the museum to say you know this is a place where I belong, this is a place where uh, I can tell a story and um, I can be a part of what's happening and, and not a scary place just because I didn't do history at school doesn't mean I can't go to this place and um, yeah so that's that's sort of really um, at the the essence of the work that um, I'm trying to do uh, with them but it's it's taking on a life of its own and extending so much more beyond that which is really um, really exciting um, oh, I bet and wonderful. So. So. I mean you've got adults helping shape but another 30 other minds who are going to be inquiring at, at all times and now they're now they get to create something which genuinely can influence others which is fantastic and, and i was just sort of just thinking at the time going this reminds me i still haven't read this book there's a book called ready fire aim uh, by michael masterson okay. and uh ready fire aim is the idea that um from an entrepreneurial thinking space i mean i know there's a stem podcast but the reality is that when we're doing stem projects project-based learning type stuff um really what we're doing is we're getting kids to think in an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial way it's like a what if thinking and what if thinking is best done when it's not constrained by the current rules. I mean, eventually you've got rules that you've got to look after eventually, but it means that you can be, you know, a little bit more loose and come up with some audacious goals. And, you know, if every now and then you come up with something that's great. I mean, I was just sort of thinking here, like there'll be so many opportunities, especially when you talked about virtual reality. I mean, the kids could have, spots where they could put Erasma in where the augmented reality starts coming into your site. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this grows. Oh, absolutely. And uh, one of the, the best things about um, the work that we're doing is it's not only uh, these kids who will um, will benefit from it because we, we know from um, some other um, exhibitions we've had, we have touring exhibitions from Questacon. Uh, Questacon's a, a science museum for people overseas. Um, yep. And uh, we know how popular it is, not just like kids come in, but then the adults, you see the parents um, or the carers who've brought their kids along to this exhibition and they're just itching to get in there. And when the kids are finished um, having a go at, at the problem or the experiment, they can't wait to dive in and have a go. And so one of the things we really wanted to make sure we included in our program is a way for other people in the community, especially adults, to, to come and engage with this. It's in a, a regional place like... Uh, Walgo, there isn't um, a 3D print shop you can duck down to on a Thursday night and do a beginner's workshop, which I've I've seen in um, online that happens in the capital cities. It's just the opportunities for that entry level uh, for adult learners are so much harder to come by. And so we wanted to uh, create some opportunity around what we were doing. So later in this year for Science Festival, we'll have some kids teaching adults about robots and coding. Uh, that's with a, with a high school group that we're collaborating with um, in a small part of this project. So these kids who are sort of 14 and 15 years old will get a chance to teach interested adults the, the basics of um, robotics and coding that they otherwise um, they could, you know, self-direct and, and find this information, but we just sort of want to light a bit of a spark for people who maybe haven't ventured into that. And some of the, I've been speaking to people who are outside of this STEAM world in their, their work and what they do, um, or their kids aren't interested. And um, it's amazing, you know, how many people say, I'm not really good at math and like, well, you don't have to be. You just have to give it a go. Um, I'm not good at math, that's for sure. <laughs> and um, and so the, the really sort of exciting bit is the way that we can uh, roll some of this out to benefit other people in the community. Um, and and that's probably the, the best thing about the work that we're doing is that we, the museum, get this, this sort of great, hopefully, this great exhibition at the end, fingers crossed, um, but also that we get to have a little bit of an impact um, with other people in the community and, and get them thinking about uh, how they fit in this new world um, with these new technologies that are coming along. 
Well, one of the things I love is how you're meshing the narrative of the past to now. And I mean, just looking at your website right now, there's a fantastic exhibition with talking, <clears throat> excuse me, while my voice goes, talking machines. That's a really yes. interesting thing. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely, it, it's a wonderful project, talking machines. That was uh, my predecessor, um, the, the regional museums officer um, before me uh, ran that project and um, she did a, an amazing job. And um, it, it is, again, it has sort of those um, layers of interaction. So what she did with that project is worked with uh, 10 um, other small volunteer museums, taught them about oral history recordings. They had training workshops and we had interviewers come out and we captured um, a whole heap of video footage about these old machines being fired up and driven, but then created a bigger narrative around the Industrial Revolution and, and how that works in farming, because the Industrial Revolution in farming regions is, uh, has a massive impact um, on labour and food production and export and even the, the railway lines through um, regional and, and sort of the western parts of Australia are sort of based around um, getting that food to um, to markets for export taxes really um, to get them through Sydney for export tax and it, it's a, a really beautiful um, story and uh, and then it has um, curriculum links for high school teachers who are interested in in sort of picking this up and teaching it there's a, a curriculum package but if you're just interested in um, old machines and life in the olden days, you can just hop on the website and, and watch these really wonderful videos uh, that, have, that we've been able to make in-house. And, um, and it's, it's very sort of similar in it. It's a little bit of that technology and it's history and it's teaching at the same time. So um, yeah, it was, it was a really special project for us. And so yeah, I think it set the bar quite high for us. So we, we wanna keep hitting that bar. Sam, I've got the feeling that you're pretty much playing. <laughs> you're pretty much getting to play in a lot of ways. <laughs> well, not not everything I do is play. So this is my this is my play. I say this is my dessert to people. So but the once I've about done, it. you know, it's good. Like, this sorry is the thing, about like, that. Being able to put all your like passion and energy and drive into something that you generally care about means that you get to have a bit of fun with it in the process. Um, and if I feel that this is a beginning of of museum riverina exploding out beyond your local government area bounds so to speak because oh, the, okay. it'd be really cool and i'd love to see what happens as you go along because there are a number of regional museums you know around australia and in every other country it'd be interesting to see how these things will grow over time oh absolutely yes um we're planning on um on documenting uh, as we go i mean we need to document uh, what we do anyway, but I think there is a huge amount of uh, potential. So, um, so we're planning on documenting the work that we do uh, through a blog, so that we can write about the process, but also the failures. It's it's something everybody talks about the success, but conversations around failure are um, a lot a lot harder to come by. But they're the ones that you learn the most from. So, uh, we're very uh, keen to. Um, put that information um, online and um, to sort of have a conversation with other people who are, are interested in in taking a risk or um, getting some advice or or you know in a similar way to um, the way that the Auckland project sort of sparked something with us if if we can spark something with another museum then um, that would be a, a wonderful outcome absolutely and I, I definitely um um, wholeheartedly agree with the idea of analyzing failure because it works like what worked what didn't work what could we do in the future is a good thing and i know that the teacher of that class will be looking at reflections anyway and actually we should give a shout out which school is uh, working with you uh it's a uh, Sturt public school um in wagga and it's the um only opportunity class in the riverina so we have um there's a lot of kids in the class who um they might commute in um, from quite a way away to to get in and have the opportunity in this uh, this sort of great learning environment. And um, we're sort of very lucky to have an amazing teacher who just rolls with 
everything that comes up. She, she I don't know how she does it. And and these, um, we did one day last year. I spent all day with the class working out their exhibitions, and I was exhausted. I said, I don't know how you do this every day. <laughs> it's, I think it's, it's just. Um, I think it's the yes, um, it was, almost full circle, like what we we're talking at the start. You got passion and drive, but also sometimes coffee. Yes, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> uh, uh, a bit of a rest uh, and, um, and a good lie down at the end of the day. But um, yeah, it just uh, these sort of rock star teachers, I call them, who just. They're just so passionate about what they do and in trying to um, um, enlighten and engage their their students they just there's nothing they wouldn't um, they wouldn't sort of at least consider or, uh, or have a work up or yeah it's they really do make the difference for people like me who are trying to engage with the education space um, who don't come from an education background just for um, for her to say. Yeah, let's give that a go. It was sort of a, a really wonderful thing, and and the expertise that she brings about um, not only things like curriculum links and and how to structure the information that we present, but just being able to um, manage the class and and know the best way to approach small problems. Um, so we've been placing the students into groups, and and she had a formula for how we would the best way to place them into their separate groups because everybody wants to do the cool stuff with the robots and the printers and um, and just that knowledge that teachers bring to the table is uh, indispensable for um, someone like me who's a bit green to the field so absolutely and I love that it's a collaboration um, it's you know two minds on the same thing and who knows where it's going to come from and look Thank you. And thank you for jumping on um, with the podcast here. And I'm just sort of wondering if there were any historians listening in, what sort of advice would you give them if they were going to go down this route? I would, I would probably say don't wait to know it all. Don't feel like um, you have to be an, an expert on this and, and don't be scared. It's a really, STEAM is just, uh, I was quite scared at the start about how am I going to learn all of this? I don't have a brain for this. Um, I'm a historian. Um, but once you sort of start to get into it, the the entire, uh, like the design um, technique or the design process is designed for, like it, it's created for failure and um, for learning and extension. And um, so I would just say my, my big advice would be don't be scared. Just get in and, and have a go. There's so many free um, tutorials and videos, and um, uh, we're going to start using um, Tinkercad, which is free, and one month trials of things like Photoshop, and just to test out what there is. And um, yeah, it's there's never been a better time to just get in and have a go and see where it takes you. Absolutely agree. Couldn't agree more. And um, hey, there'd undoubtedly there'd be people who would love to get in touch with you. Um, how could they? Where are your contact details? Where could they go? Okay, the, probably the best place to start is the Museum of the Riverina um, website, so which is museumriverina.gov.au, um, and um, which is uh, in part of Wagga Wagga City Council. And um, if anyone wants to email me, it's uh, Leah L E A H dot Sam at wagga dot nsw dot gov dot au. So I'd love to hear about other people who are interested um, in sort of working in this field and um, any um, experiences they might have if they're already um, a part of it, or if we can help other people get started. We would definitely love to um, to to talk. Absolutely. And if you're passing through Wagga Wagga, hey, drop in on them. They've got two sites, a Civic Centre and Willens Hill. I think that when I next visit my brother, I'm going to have to pop in because <laughs> it sounds like I really Absolutely. should have. Absolutely. Like mm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, fantastic. Yes, we, we wish we had one big building, but this is what we have. So, um, yes, we're, we're sort of across two sites. But um, the museum in the garden, surely you can't go past a garden museum. So. A Absolutely. And um, look, that sounds like a definite plan because I think I might be popping down at Easter time. So <laughs> it sounds like... Oh, well, we'd like... love to see you then. The, the miniature trains will be running. It's a, a magical 
a magical experience. So. Awesome. Sounds like fun. Hey, thank you very much, Sam, for jumping on. And uh, hey, we might catch you another time. Lovely. Thank you very much. This is the Physics Ed Podcast. We're all about science, ed tech and more. To see 100 fun free experiments you can do with your class, go to physicseducation.com.au. That's physics spelled F-I-Z-Z-I-C-S. And click 100 free experiments. And there we go. We just heard from Sam Lear, who's from the Museum of the Riverina, and she's definitely doing a fantastic job. Now, if you wonder about what's the impact for the kids, the best way to really assess it is, well, ask the kids themselves. And that's exactly what Sam just did. So what's been uh, the best thing so far? Uh, I'm creating the robots. And what's your favourite thing? Um, well, my favourite thing was programming the robots on the iPads and like controlling them with the remotes and everything. And being able to use the 3D printer. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product and having it published in the museum. And what are you looking forward to? Probably seeing how everything looks and how all the dresses and outfits look at the end. This is the Physics Ed Podcast. We're excited about science. Grab a copy of our new book, Be Amazing, How to Teach Science the Way Primary Kids Love, from our website. Just search Be Amazing Book. It's available in hard copy and ebook. Go to physicseducation.com.au. That's physics spelled F I Z I C S. As you can definitely imagine just what it's like as a student walking into a museum knowing full well that in just a couple of months your own exhibition, your own installation, We'll be there. <laughs> How cool is that? I love what Sam Lee is doing, and I really encourage anyone who happens to have a museum, zoo, aquarium, wherever you happen to be, engage with your local students. Your schools will love it. And hey, if you're in a school, why not go out to the local museums and ask, well, can your Opportunity class, can your Extension students get involved in a STEAM project? I reckon they'd have an absolute ball. But until then, I hope you're getting your lessons really scienced up, making sure they're highly engaging and hands-on. And I hope you're having a lot of fun doing it. You've been listening to me, Ben Newsom from Physics Education, and you've been listening to the Physics Ed Podcast. I'll catch you next week. You've been listening to another Physics Ed Podcast. We're excited about science. Subscribe to us on iTunes to download the next episode as soon as it's released. And don't forget, for hundreds of ideas, free experiments, our new Be Amazing book and more, go to physicseducation.com.au. That's physics spelled F-I-Z-Z-I-C-S. This podcast is part of the Australian Educators Online Network. AEON.net.au